Hey guys, welcome to another voiceover tutorial. My name is Akimi-chan. And for this term's voiceover, let's try a different skin tone character. So if I had to pick, I'd pick Marina. She has my favorite design from Splatoon. I really like her color, uh, color combination with the turquoise, which happened to be one of my favorite colors. And uh, yeah, I haven't painted a lot of uh, deeper skin tone characters, so she will be an interesting character to tackle for sure. So as you can see, I've already complete completed the base. Uh, so I got the background, I got the sketch done, and also I got the blocking of the basic elements of her character. And as you can see, I grabbed two reference pictures just in case I want to get the, the color tone right. So I got the reference on the side. I haven't done that since, since a long time ago. I haven't done that for a while. So I, I, I think I did that. Yes, last? No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, it's been a while since I've done that. I don't really do it that often, but yeah. Um, let me show you guys what... I had going so for the background so I'm not too sure about what I want from from the background so I kind of just took a bunch of photo stock from Adobe stock as you can see once again these are only samples if I like it and committed to them towards the end I will be grabbing the high res without the watermark but for for testing purpose I just like to just grab the samples so you know I can save money that way because I won't have to waste uh, buying it and then after I change my mind I have to buy another one so always I started just re using um, test, test samples with the watermark on it for that purpose so yeah these are the photos collages that I decide to put together I might end up changing that later on you know and um, maybe I've Maybe I'll be like, huh, after I render a little, you know, it might not look as good anymore with the background. So I might change that a bit later. We'll see. Hopefully. I am kind of indecisive about the background. Um, but yeah. So, got the sketch. Um, I cleaned up my sketch a lot for this. I, I don't know. I just wanted to get it. I wanted to try to see if I can get a nice clean sketch this time just to sw switch things up a bit. So the sketch did take quite a bit of time. I forgot to do one thing. I forgot to do the lapel for her top here. Put it on a separate layer. I don't even know if I'm writing it right. I incur the, the grammar, probably not that great. <laughs> Alright, time to do the base coat. So I'm gonna pop out the reference. Also, this is this was my previous sketch. This right here. It's pretty similar to the new sketch. Just slightly different. Okay, back to back to the main folder with all the layers separated. Well, all the elements that I usually separate, so Let's go ahead and I'm just going to be using the skin tone from the reference picture and I might also uh, modify it a little depending on oh hold on depending on the lighting I might switch that up a bit so let me go ahead I'm gonna start blocking it out and I know exactly what I want. I want her to have neon stockings and then leather shorts. I'm just going to block it in for now. Her biker short vest. Oh wait, halter vest. I think that's what they're called. Just gonna try my best to block it in. I missed a spot. I'm gonna get to it. And 
farm here. Actually, I can start by color picking some of that. Skin tones. It's, her skin tone here is really... It's really warm. There we go. And... Gonna go ahead... Paint on the glove. Let me let me slightly shade it a bit just so I don't get confused. Underneath, I'm gonna add a bit of her skin tone for the uh, highlighting the shadow, a bit more shadow, and also her. Oh yeah, her fingers. It, it's got some cool gradient effect. So. I'm gonna go ahead and do that after I paint it a bit darker and then I'm gonna go ahead and give that nice gradient fingertip look the lapel so lock that layer up fill that in add a bit of shine from the background which is blue same for her vest actually the vest is kind of tricky because uh gonna have to render it in a way that looks a little bit like latex So this is just going to be um, for now. I'm going to switch that up a bit more. Let me add a bit of light on the bottom. Fill this in. Get a bit of lighter color. Darker color. Just going to use the highlight from literally from the reference, and then I have the shadow here too. Get a bit of the shadow going on, and I'm just gonna be using that shadow on the rest of the body as well. And then her belly button, she's got a really cool turquoise belly button ring well at least that's what it looks like then just highlight that let me go ahead select a bit of the highlight on the hip and add it to the side Add a bit of the highlight on the leg. There. Okay, it's look getting there. So I just went ahead and uh, added some basic highlights. Going to here, remove that. Going to the face. Same deal. Just gonna be using the colors from the reference here it's pretty important to have the reference because uh, I need to make sure I get her face right oh, hold on. I'm gonna try to make it kind of accurate to the um, the 3d model but um, with a bit of my spin hopefully I'll be able to achieve something that I want so shading it kind of according to the the 3d model here so for the eyes I'm going to 
zoom in a bit here make another layer in case I mess up I'm, I can't always undo it so let's go ahead and kind of try to replicate as close as I can to the style there the splatoon style but also having a bit of my take on it just blending that eyeliner into her eyelid here let's see I might switch the style adjust the style a bit depending and then we got the whites of the eyes I'm gonna be using a blue tone with a bit of gray in there and then she's got some more eyeliner on the bottom I'm going to use a little bit of the skin tone shade give her a bit of uh, eye bags you know select contour it and blend that in and then the I kind of wanted to give her like pouty lips but let's see how how I'm going to achieve this though <laughs> I think she could use she would do well with like a nude lip so I'm gonna go ahead add a tiny bit of pink in there and then going back to her skin tone add, add a bit of highlight up on the lid And bl oh, blend, 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 using the airbrush to help me blend. Let's give her a little smile or grin, actually. Grin over here, just like in the reference. And then her eyes is actually quite interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and just take that color from the actual reference photo so we can get a accurate color of her eyes. And then her eyebrows. Okay, that's not bad. And she's got some pretty intense eyeliner on the bottom of her eyes. Let's add some more lashes. I always add lashes. So she's got her eyebrows and all and then there's like highlight at the top of her head like that let me just go ahead and replicate that and then we have a bit of highlight here where her nose is curved This takes me back when I was uh, painting Peach. That's the type of style that it reminds me of. Give her a little nostril. Going for a bit of a, a stylized look. And some highlight at the tip there. Highlight on the cheek. And then the rest pretty much just blend it in. Okay, for now. I might switch that up later, but that's the base. Now for the hair. So I wasn't too sure if I was gonna do a bit 
a full-on tentacle or have a bit of hair texture, so I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and start though. So just going to using the reference just subtly do that. I'm using the airbrush just so I can have a nice gradient. So let me see here. And do the inside of the that I'm going to be using a bit of a bluish tone for that. Let's add like that. Maybe add a tiny bit of beige. I just noticed that uh her head is on it's uh <laughs> flipped. The direction is flipped. Okay, onto the other side, same thing. Select the color from the reference. Make it a little darker here. And I actually wanted for this side to grip her chest a little, you know. Go ahead, fill that in with the turquoise gradient gradually down like that. And after I do that, I'm gonna go back here and line the inner side of the tentacles. Fill it in with the beige tone here. There. Oh yeah, and also the suction cups as well, so just gonna fill those in real quick. Okay, um, so that's the top here is done. Oh yes, and the arm. So for the arm, go ahead and uh, take the reference color. I need a dark color. Let's go for a dark color. Need a darker color. Oh wait darker color glove go ahead and fill in the glove now actually I'm going to paint the fingers first though so first with the skin tone and then with the turquoise tip and then we will cover the hand with the glove okay and then the rest of the hair slash tentacles so got the dark color first and then have the um, turquoise same for here and then we're gonna be coloring the uh, the inside of each tentacle. And then fill it in with the beige color. There we go. Okay, so I think we got the base going. So now it's time to refine this and add some more detail also slowly remove the sketch lines because uh, the sketch lines sometimes get in the way. Oh yeah, I forgot. Last but not least, we have her her uh, thingy here. I forgot what it's called. The zipper? Yeah, that's, that's a zipper. Okay, fill it in. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab that color, add a tiny bit of gradient, then using the lasso tool here so I can curve out that design. Delete and it's got 
this thing here. After that, I'm gonna go ahead, add the volume. I'm going to have to kind of uh, refine this a little after so that it doesn't look super cut out cut out like but this is a base it's gonna be a base for now let's do a step okay time to do a bit of refining I'm gonna flip the canvas always good to kind of flip it every once in a while just to kind of see okay am I on track or not I'm gonna be working on the top okay let me go ahead and look at what I had in mind for the top with the sketch so for the latex here I'm gonna have to grab a reference so that I know how to kind of treat that material. Okie dokie, let's get started. So let's go ahead, add a bit of highlight here. I'm not even sure if I'm, okay hold on. Add a bit of highlight here. Use a darker color. Really contour this highlight right here. Add a tiny bit of highlight here. And uh, just gonna gradually blend this in and uh, really make this a bit brighter wait why is it not oh that's why Just gonna try out a few things. Gonna go here, add some small details. Actually, maybe the highlight should have been here. I'm trying to figure out where the highlight should be. Contour that real quick. Let's add a bit of rim light underneath. Maybe add a bit of turquoise underneath. Just for that reflectiveness. real quick okay going to the armpit area just gonna go ahead and refine the the armpit a bit add some poof for the chest highlight for the chest let's go ahead and line it so I know how um, the, ch the vest is supposed to wrap around her anatomy there I'm going to also at the same time paint some pressure lines coming from the vest 
pressure lines combined with some more shading to contour the roundness of her chest. Let's go ahead and make this area a focal point of the highlight. Have a bit more highlight here. So this is a highlight point. Gonna go here and kind of add some more highlight to that area, which is the second highlight light source on the vest. Cop actually, no, select that area, gonna make it a little darker. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the lasso tool and select. Uh, I'm trying to test out to see. To see where I should put the highlight. Okay. Let's go ahead and. Uh, continue here add another bit of highlight just testing it out I'm uh, adding some sharp um, highlight like lines you see this a lot in latex type materials where the highlight is kind of Sharper. I guess it's reflecting off of the environment somewhat. Let's go ahead and add like a really shiny highlight here. Let me go ahead around here and add some more rim light highlight at the bottom with a bit of skin tone as well hopefully it works i'm not sure i'm gonna go ahead add another bit a bit more another bit of highlight add some shadow some more shadow and a bit more highlight <laughs> I'm, I'm just like kind of testing stuff out as you can see there's a lot of just adding a lot of these highlights well hopefully it works out um, in the end I'm just uh, testing stuff out let's go ahead and actually take some of that color finally from the reference gonna have to edit the shape now cuz don't want it to be too pointy now do we Just want to have a little bit of it back to the chest. Just going to blend it in a bit using same color palette. You know, just to be safe. I don't want to be be labeled as a racist again. So gotta make sure the skin tone is just right. Now I had a. Uh, trouble kind of painting d deeper skin tones in the past but I think I get it now so I think for deeper skin tones usually a bit more leaning towards uh, non I don't know how to describe it um, not as 
pink but more red red tones deep red deep red brown that type of skin tone and less pink that's what I've learned let me go ahead select a bit of that add a bit of gray and also they reflect more blue in their skin tone as well I suppose it really depends on the environment too let me go ahead and take a look so this is the hair I want the chest over here to have a bit of volume Alright guys, we're back. I did a little bit of rendering on the top. So this is what I came up with actually. Kind of like how it was kind of it was like this before. Kind of like how that was. Um, but yeah, this is where I am. Still testing out. As you can see, I added a bit of gray tone to the skin. Deeper skin tones usually, when it comes to highlight, usually they got um, somewhat of either like a bluish highlight or or something something dull. Hold on a second. Okay, let's go with that. Let me go ahead and work on that armpit. As well as here. I'm gonna go ahead and contour it. Actually, maybe. Maybe add a tiny bit of highlight here. Have it mm, contour the chest a bit more like that. Merge down. Let me lock. Make sure the layers locked, and then work on the arm here. Go ahead, select the armpit, add a bit of shadow. There we go. Clean that up, lock it down, add a bit of Actually, maybe not. Let me go ahead and leave it like this for now. And kind of just refine the top area. display the line so that I can kind of determine where the ab is and I'm just gonna work on the ab area now just going to slowly highlight and contour this ab line here Go ahead, add a bit of shadow to the belly button using the airbrush to help me create a soft looking shadow and uh, slowly kind of adding more 
more depth into it. Let me go ahead and just select. Select. Pick up a darker color. I'm going to go ahead and manually pick. A bit more contour here too. here and slowly blend it in. Same for here. And some shadow to contour the hip. ahead and use the shadow to contour contour sorry contour the hip a bit more and gradually kind of blending it in so just getting a bit more definition let me rotate real quick so I can get a feel of how it should look at this angle so we got the latex um, shorts so or leather kind of want to make it shiny so it's going to end up looking latexy adding a bit of highlight here and there using the lasso tool to help me color in the center it's gonna be darker and I'm just gonna pick colors from the top here and use it on the on the shorts as well just to kind of save on time up the silhouette of the shorts at the same time and I'm just going to add the shadow at the same time as well for the legs so for the legs I'm gonna go ahead and select so that I can go ahead and line it properly it's looking a little airbrush so gonna go in with the standard round brush here to create let me see maybe it should be darker yeah let's go ahead and do that I'm just gonna use the solid round brush with a bit of softness setting on it to help me determine what the shadow is so we got the highlight here. Let's go ahead and kind of clean up this area. So I got the highlight on this side, so I'm going to have to edit this part just slightly to accommodate with that to make that light source make sense pretty much let's extend the highlight up and then back to the airbrush to help me blend stuff in add a 
bit more shadowed here. Shade this part a bit more. There. And as for the stocking, I just want to keep it kind of glowy like that. Same with this side. Let me just go ahead and add the skin tone in. Add a little bit of gradient for the stocking. And back to the hip on this side. I'm gonna blend, blend in that hip. Rotate. Let's do auto contrast real quick. Nothing happened, so that means Photoshop think that it is the optimal amount of contrast in my piece. Let me go ahead and rotate. And I'm gonna be going through going through here and kind of just rendering some of these areas manually it's a lot of shiny glove to be rendered I'm gonna pop back the sketch so that I can uh, see where I'm painting the guidelines and whatnot okay now I, I can remove it so now I'm going to be painting the glove, first adding some shadow, and it's going to be um, pretty contrasting because of the shiny material of the glove. I'm going to be making it just a little bit uh, messy a little bit of uh, turquoise there, a bit of skin tone here and there. Just going to clean clean some of the the glove up as well as for the uh, fingers. So for the fingers I'm still not sure how I'm going to paint this. I mean, hmm. let's go ahead. Give her. I'm just gonna do the silhouette of the finger plus the nail, and just kind of have have a gradient between the skin tone and the turquoise using the lasso tool to help me isolate some of these areas so I can put down shadow. Okay. Let's see if I can kind of line the nail. I don't even know if it'll look good or not. that for now lock that in now I'm gonna go in to do a tiny bit of highlight just gonna make it brighter so glove I got basic rendering done back to this layer the hand so I'm thinking this part probably gonna be in shadow because of the tentacles and all casting shadow in, on the the hand. I'm gonna go ahead select a highlight for the hand. And uh, give a bit of shine to the skin there. Now that that's done, we 
me go ahead and do this arm now. Or actually, I should be going up, going up the line here. Hold on. So we we'll get a bit of lapel. I'm going to make this part have a bit of shine. And then the rest will be dark. Same with here. Let's go ahead add a bit more shadow to some of these areas. And then I'm going to add a bit of highlight using the lasso tool. Again, I'm trying to do some really sharp, sharp highlights since it is a fairly shiny material. So. That's the first one. Then the next one will be this highlight. So hopefully it works. I'm just testing out. I can't really explain why I'm putting it there. Just to test out how it's gonna look. Let's go ahead and add a really shiny highlight here. That's not too bad. And then add a another layer of highlight here. Let's add a tiny some shine in some of these areas. I not sure. And also add a bit of skin tone. around um, around the the neck area just so you know we can say that it's catching some of the surrounding colors and then selecting those areas and making it darker last but not least I'm gonna go ahead and add that really intense highlight on top add a bit of volume and maybe even here actually no hold up let's see where can i add some shine maybe here some shine there I guess just testing it out I might switch the how switch the highlight placement later let's go with that for now kind of want to work on this part for a bit clean that up let's go ahead and add another bit of light here another highlight there let me go ahead and add some more actually no not there how about the bottom here and add the shadow there and then follow up with a bit of no actually no not there how about here oh hold on hmm. do this and have a tiny bit of shadow in the center let's go ahead and add some 
don't even know what this is like some reflective lines gonna contour that part and then darken that part Just going to line this with a dark color and then a highlight color just to create a bit of um, a volume in the fabric thickness I mean I'm going to um, take a bit of yellowish tone put in the center here bring the highlight up a bit usually in latex there's kind of a mix between warm tone and cool tone i prefer to use a bit of a yellowish slash beige tone as my warm tone in dark latex At least that's uh, my thought process when I paint, you know, dark color latex. That's usually my my rule when I do it. And then kind of just blend the rest in. Back to the hand here. Let me remove this just so I can look at the arm oh, hold on so I can get a proper view of what's going on there so that I can refine it I need a bit of a highlight here Let me go ahead and to the armpit and then just kind of blend the rest of it into the arm following the anatomy and all I was gonna say if I should put some highlight there, but nah, does not look too great. Maybe a bit, maybe a bit of highlight here actually, around this area. And to add some thickness as well. area up a bit let me see the uh, the background here I'm gonna attempt to put a bit of that background reflection on there taking a bit of the background color and kind of trying to duplicate it on the vest here Just kind of trying to trying to tell 
the volume of the chest here I need to remove it a bit it needs to be a bit rounder too actually add a bit of highlight oh hold on highlight up here maybe a bit more highlight So now I am pretty much experimenting with how I'm rendering the top here. So I do want to contour the anatomy, but at the same time I'm thinking I can't do it too much. I need to make sure that it actually works for what I'm trying to achieve. Let's go ahead and add a bit of highlight. Hold on. This color is a highlight. Let's go ahead and use that highlight. Pop a bit of it on her shoulder. And maybe even a bit. Bit. Um between the armpit and then going back to add shadow to the armpit almost there but uh, still needs work actually let me take that highlight and expand it oh, okay I like I kind of like the direction of that okay let's go with that now let's kind of render the, the arm here now so so the arm just gonna take the color that's already there from the reference and I'm just going to be using it so let's add a darker tone here for a bit more contrast Let me pop the sketch back and you know what I think what I'll do is kind of copy the sketch and then paste it on top of um, the arm thing lower the opacity a bit so now I got the lines present I can go ahead and sort of try to render that a bit so I'm gonna start off by fixing the silhouette and at the same time I can go ahead add some shadow where shadow is needed especially near the knuckles of the finger let's go ahead and add some highlight and same for under here for the fingertips let's go ahead and I'm just gonna do the silhouette the finger plus the fingernail silhouette I mean and also at the same time just um, fix fixing some of the silhouette as well Go ahead and line it. This is the thumb actually. So the thumb is gonna be pretty 
gradient. Let's go ahead, add some shadow and then highlight. and do the silhouette for the nail lock that in clean up the wrist and then last but not least we have the finger bit of highlight up on that side and then with the shadow on the other side Go ahead and add a bit of that nail detail. Continue to clean clean up here. Still a little messy, but it's getting there. Now for the glove. So for the glove, I'm going to be uh, adding some wrinkles, folds from the the glove itself and from the wrinkles from the, the hand. Let's go ahead and add some shine here and then I'm going to add shadow between on each side of the highlight. bit of blue then add some highlight on the thumb area as well as on the side here use a bit of um, the highlight, line the highlight on the glove, put that there, and casually scribble a bit of it on the top there. So now I go in and blend, blend it in. Let's go ahead and line it with a dark color. And uh, just gonna continue the highlight trend all the way on the pinky there. After that, just blend the rest of these area in. Same for the finger that I'm gonna be doing on the glove. Just going to apply shadow towards this side, highlight towards the uh, top, I guess. There we go. So I got the hand kind of done. Gotta fix fix this a bit. Now it's a bit more even. Apply a bit of shadow on top. Go here, let's see how they do it. So we got the highlight. Oh, hold on. Highlight and then the shadow. Mm. 
might have to make the wrists a bit thicker later, but for now I think that's a pretty good render. Let's go ahead and auto contrast real quick. Okay. It kind of made the skin a little lighter, so what I'll do is increase the intensity of the glove only. Let's see. Okay, yeah, that's about it. Go back to this. So this part is gonna be a little shinier. Let's go ahead and add some highlight like we did for the other part. Keeping it kind of sharp, the highlight sharp. Adding a bit of shadow on this side. Add some more highlight and uh, gonna see here um, let's go ahead make this part darker and then add highlight bit of highlight at the top too and uh, continue the highlight extended up maybe add a little fold every now and then just to create a bit of fabric fold texture it just adds um, a bit something also lining it lining the top with a highlight to kind of give a bit of uh, thickness gonna go on the edge here, the side here, and let's see if I can apply a bit of highlight here, adding a bit more contrast with another bit of highlight and then shadow follow following that and I'm going to extend a bit of tiny bit of highlight here and there actually not sure if it's working or not I'm just testing stuff out uh, yeah so far so so far not too bad like if I zoom out I think I might need to tweak this part though all right so we're back this is what I did, just kind of um, added a bit more highlight to the skin tone. So as you can see, I added some shadow and some highlight to kind of, I was looking at for her forehead and I liked that volume. So I kind of just got inspired by this and rolled with it, um, picked that highlight and then used it as a reference on these high points of her body and uh, now I think uh, it's time to work on the tentacles so I have a feeling it's gonna be a little challenging because her tentacle uh, her hair is it's like a little wet looking so it's gonna be interesting how I'm gonna how I'm gonna have to pull that off. So I'm guessing first. Um, actually, let me go ahead and add the suction cups for her hair. Using I'm just gonna pick pick the color from the official. Um, reference I've got down here and I'm gonna try to so basically I'm gonna be using that as a reference and base basic shading using that reference so there's some freckling going on as well but yeah I'm just using this as reference this is I feel like this is probably the best that I in order to achieve uh accurate but realistic rendering of her tentacle hair i'm gonna have to be sticking very closely to this reference here so as you can see there's like two little 
highlight dots. I'm just gonna replicate that to highlight dots. And then I have that inside suction cup. Okay, so we got one down. And as you can see, it got a bit of highlight going on. So using the lasso tool, I can also add a bit of highlight. And then uh, add a bit of shadow. Very subtle. And then time for this tentacle. So I was hoping to... So this part is kind of twisted this long tentacle is kind of twisted and this part is laying right on top of her chest which means that this is the highlight here so logically there would be a pretty intense highlight on top of this tentacle as well so just selecting the top of that tentacle and uh, make it bright or I could just select the color that's already there on the reference. Help me out a bit. Use use the color tone that I can grab off here to help me out. So there's a um, there's a couple of suction cup on this end of the tentacle as well, but we won't be able to see it too much. So I'm just going to paint a little bit of it, kind of implied on the other side and I'm just gonna add the two tiny dots of highlight as I did on top although you know it's not exactly here I can still borrow stuff from here and then use it as well <laughs> okay so so uh, I'm just gonna blend it Lock it down, add a bit more shadow, so this part for sure, for sure it's gonna be shaded as well as this part I think. So just select those area and darken them up. Once it's darkened up, I can kind of work work with it a bit. I'm gonna add the highlight here. The chest is probably casting a bit of shadow on the tentacles as well. So gotta have that. Just gonna blend it in. So here gonna have a bit of highlight on the inner area where there's shade. Continue with the shadow especially where the tentacle meets chest hold on let me just use the solid round brush gonna go ahead and blend it in this way since uh, I didn't really want to use the airbrush because if I do that then it's gonna be too airbrushy for what I want to achieve which is slightly um, textured like that. let's go ahead select the color again it's a little brighter so using the airbrush this time to add a bit of that Same with here. Let's go ahead and add a tiny bit of the under part of the tentacle, like right here. And this is the tip. I don't know if I, yeah, I think trying to make this part a little pointy the way I render it. I want to make the tentacle look like it's twisted. So a bit of the under layer shows here. That means I got to cover it up on this side. Let's 
something like that. Gonna lasso that up, blend, blend this up a bit. Now, gonna go and shade this part. And uh, gonna go ahead, um, make the part I just selected darker. Like that. So now you can kind of get the kind of feel it. Let me go ahead and add shadow here so i'm just gonna do a base shading without the shine effect just yet right now her her hair looks very matte gonna change that later let's go ahead and start by adding some more indication of shine it's kind of interesting actually so there's these I'm just gonna follow the shape of these highlighters it's kind of a particular let's go ahead and add a highlight here and then another one right next to it, just as the reference shows. And then near the edge here, I'm gonna go ahead and add this color. This tentacle, keep it dark. I'm just gonna add a bit of shadow here and uh, select this part. Gonna go ahead and add a bit of highlight to that area. Let me see how it will look if I kind of add some height light oh no actually no it doesn't work maybe around here like that maybe using the blue just going to mm, nope Blend that. Same with here, highlight. Mm. Let's try this out. Let me add some. Highlight here. So I'm actually not sure. I'm just testing it out. Can I add some highlight here in this shape? As for here, I'm not even sure how to approach it. So let's do this and have slightly oh slightly lighter color Meh. <laughs> I don't think it's working uh, I'll, I'll work on it I'll work on it 
expand the highlight. Actually. Probably need a more reference for her tentacle hair. Alright, let's uh, tackle this tentacle now. Okay, let me select the outer edge. Oh, wait, hold on. Use the airbrush real quick. And then, just gonna scribble a bit. Add a bit of shadow. And then, oh, hold on. And then, just look at the reference. And then I'm gonna add another bit of highlight here. There's some more random lighting around here for highlight that is. Let me unlock. And I'm gonna keep scribbling. Add a bit of the background color in as well. This is gonna take a while. So zoom in for a bit. So this face, I'm gonna stick to using the airbrush because I need to get all those random scribbly highlights down and the best way to do it is through airbrush. Just going to darken that part a bit. Back to the uh, suction cups. Going to blend it in. Add a tiny layer of tentacle the uh, darker part of the tentacle and then refine it, add some shine to the tip to the top so using the airbrush blend that in and then this part add some Highlight, keeping as scribbly as scribbly as I can. Just go ahead and add some scribbly highlight again here. Gonna use a bit of the environment highlight plus a bit of green. And uh, select the outer edge, then I'm just going to refine this bit, try to kind of give a bit of texture here, and then got a bit of shadow here. Let's go ahead over here and add a bit of blue then a bit of highlight and uh some highlight here ok 
okay let's uh, ease up on this side for a bit I'm gonna see if I can work on this here okay um, so from the reference that I can see got like I have like this one line of highlight here the very edge I think I moved the character a little, that's why there's a section where there's nothing. Go ahead and paint that back. And then... I'm just going to go ahead and blend these back, add a bit of that darker color. So I can have a nice gradient. Gonna add a tiny bit of highlight here. Let me see if I can add some highlight here. I'm not sure, but let's try to add bit of shine maybe I can add some skin tone as a reflection on the inner area and same with the jacket just going to see if I can add a tiny trace of it on the outer edge here add a bit of blue um, and then Just kind of looking at how I did that side. So, I'm supposed to have a bit more shadow here and then this gradient. Gradient some highlight in. Add some. Um, Just gonna scribble in hopefully some highlight on the side. Trying to figure out what color I'm gonna put it, maybe like a beige. Oh my gosh. Beige with a bit of blue, maybe. I mean it is uh, definitely, I think, better. Let's go ahead and add a shine here. I don't know if it's actually like uh, the right texture and all, so we're uh, just gonna have to experiment. Scribble a bit so I can add some uh, more uh, highlight variation here and there so 
this part needs to be very much highlighted. So let's see what color can I be this color. And on the side, let's make it a bit, have a bit of beige. A bit of blue, and then going back in with a bit of scribbles. Let's go ahead and highlight this uh, mm, this color, maybe. I'm not sure. Test it out here. Nope, not that color. Let's do this color. Light it with shadow. Okay, it's starting to be shinier. So I'm pretty much just using the same concept here and uh, using that to help me shade down here as well. I'll rotate it. Okay, time to work on this side. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm gonna create a new layer. Just increasing the, um, exp expanding the darker part of the tentacle a bit more. Softly blend it in. And now for the suction cup, I'm gonna start off with darker color. Put that in a bit, add a bit of turquoise here, using the airbrush to make a soft transition, that's the key. Let's go ahead, add a bit more bright part in some of these areas, so there's like another suction cup here I think. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the uh, rough guide of it. Fill it in with fill it in with a bit of soft rendering and then um, darker color is going to line the inside of the suction cup. Got a bit of shadow around it. And a bit more of the warmer tone as well at the very edge. Again, I'm uh, using a reference to help me, kind of help me with where, what kind of color needs to be there. And where to put the highland stuff because I have no idea well I have some idea but uh, not too much now time for a bit of shadow here along with a bit of highlight and then followed by some more bright highlight lines. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Let's go here, add a bit more shadow around there. And using the lasso tool to help me isolate that area, it's time to add a tiny bit of rim light. There 
and followed by rim light contouring one of the suction cups. It's starting to look glossy. I'm gonna go in with a bit of a shine highlight lines contouring the suction cup. Later on, going here, it's time for some random highlights. Use a bit of the purple to help me. After that, another bit of a random highlight and one here too. So that one's gonna be blue. This one's gonna be this color. Just gonna scribble a bit here and there. Gonna take this color, scribble it around this area and gradually blend it in a bit. And then using some more scribble, highlight this area. Actually, let me clean that up a bit and then take highlight tone and gently graze the outer edge of it at the same time I'm going to correct it a bit too extend that the highlight all the way down be lighter. As for here, let's go ahead and add a tiny bit of purple. Around here, add a bit of dark covering it and then I'm going to use this lighter color and kind of add some random patches it's like the texture I guess for her tentacles got like some dotted lines and stuff and then I'm good with that merge down create a new layer to continue with this and then we're gonna have some tiny highlights here and there and one that contours the direction where it goes and then we're gonna have some that's a little sharper following again the curvature of the tentacles and then we're gonna get a nice bright little highlight right here continue to highlight the curvature the tentacle while I'm at it actually I'm gonna go ahead and extend the oh hold on extend this part here or actually let me just kind of wanna have a bit of it kind of twisting. I, I, I want the tentacle to be a little twisty. So yeah. Let's go ahead and kind of line it a bit and use use a bit of blue tone too while I'm doing it. There's some random specks of purple too, actually. So we're gonna have that. Gonna refine that area. Oh, 
Sorry guys. So I did some refining off camera. Um, pretty much worked on the face a little. I actually painted that on a separate layer so I can show you guys what I did. So just added some more shading, smoothed it out, refined the lips and especially the forehead. I really wanted to capture that um, lighting. So referencing back to the actual model, I just kind of based it off of how her face is here and how the lighting is on that face and apply it on here with a bit of my style but uh, still trying to keep it to the original stylized look for Marina so that's what I did and then also refined the hand a bit and then I actually spend a bit of time trying to figure out the rendering for the top so i actually did quite a bit of testing here and i i essentially what i did for the tentacle lighting i kind of took the same principle and did it to the top as well and i think that it looks a lot better as well as adding a bit of purple hue because um if we look at well, probably not here, but another reference that I used. Um, clearly on her top there, there is a bit of purple hue that I saw. Kind of similar to how the tentacle has purple hue. Um, based on that, I also added to the top and it kind of gives it a nice glossy look. It, it does, it looks a bit more realistic, I find. So yeah, just refined it refine that a bit i'm gonna kind of do the same on this one and uh yep this is where i am so let's take it from here continue on with the other tentacle let's keep going i'm actually going to make this tentacle just a little bigger and uh also use a bit of this highlight extend it down and just going to blend it in i notice as well in the reference picture i'm using um there's a bit of purple contouring actually probably not that light but there is a bit of purple like on the outer edge there I think purple is a common theme here for for the rendering. Now for this tentacle, just going to add some very soft shading variants. Okay, so right now it looks a little flat. Uh, now I'm just going to layer on some shadow followed by highlight to give that elevated look let's go ahead add some shadow here Okay, it needs to be a little bit more elevated. So what I'll do is control shift C, control shift V, bring it out a bit. So there's a bit of a uh, volume. pretty much give it a bit more volume where where it feels like the suction cup is um, popping out a bit I'm gonna add some more highlight add some more here let me go ahead and line it Going to 
also highlight it slightly let's go ahead actually go ahead and add some more highlight here also notice that near the tip of the tentacle is actually a little darker back to this part the beige part so pretty much going to first add a bit of shadow near the edge kind of but not going all the way to the edge leaving a little bit of lighter color for that rim light look i'm just going to um do some scribbles as well because that seems to be the theme of texture for the tentacle first texturize and then add highlight i think i'm getting a hang of it that's pretty much the the pattern that I've been seeing. Then I'm gonna use the highlight that's already there and then add a bit of highlight. Blend it in. Go ahead and use a bit of yellow tone. And once again, scribbling. Just getting a variety of color scribble scribble color and actually also add a bit of scribble alongside here as well let me see if i can add some wrinkles here if this is going to maybe I'll have to clean this up a bit delete delete okay so that's that I'm going to um, based on previous previous uh, pattern I'm just going to add the purple the tip here and then oh god this i don't have a reference for but i'm gonna pretty much see if i can let me merge down first um let's go ahead create another layer so now it's time for the random uh shapes let's go ahead and do th i guess we'll start off with this scribble scribble random shape well not that random but like random at the edges highlight in the corners of it Ooh, i guess it does work but i think it needs to be another color a bit let's go ahead scribble on a bit of shadow here and then scribble on the highlights around here just experimenting here I might 
uh, undo that later. Darken that up. Select that area. I'm going to highlight that area a bit. Let's go ahead and use a bit of... I'm gonna go to dissolve. Time to add a bit of shine in some of these areas. Add a bit of shine here. Of course, gotta remove bits of it because if it's too much, then uh, sometimes it'll end up not working out. Now, going here, darken, oh, hold on, darken, and then highlight. There. Well, I mean, that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the best I can do. It does make sense at the same time. I think it uh, it needs work. Let's go over here. So the lighting is coming from the top. So that means let's go ahead and put this part a little bit darker. Blend it in. Add a bit of skin tone in there. And just going to blend, blend stuff in. how well it does with a bit of highlight. I'm just going to scribble it a little just to make it a bit more organic. Here, actually, what I'll do here is copy, paste, and darken. Let's go ahead and just add a bit more shadow there, and then what I'll do is copy this whole part and make it a little bit more intense actually make adjust it to be a bit more turquoise-ish -ish. gotta work on the suction cup because it looks like it needs a bit of work so I'm just gonna add a bit of highlight to some of the areas for the suction cup okay now let's work on the side actually I kind of want to refine this tentacle here. Let's 
see if I can uh, make it look a little better. I'm going to actually, first things first, first things first, add a bit of purple to the side. Ooh, immediately the purple really helps with kind of making it a little better, I think. Need to work on this side now. Go ahead and add the add the uh, random highlight using this color. Works a little bit, it's not the best. Definitely need to keep adjusting it. Let's go ahead and apply a bit of this color on here at the very edge. I'm just going to kind of casually graze it. Scribble, scribble. After scribbling, going in with a tiny but more precise brush. Just going to line the edge now. And uh, let's go ahead and add some additional. I'm just going to use a bit of this color. Scribble some additional highlight at the very edge. Gotta have some here too. Okay, I think it looks a little more glossy now. See, so remove that. Yeah, it looks more shiny. I feel like I kind of went crazy with that, the, the, the glossy texture there. Alright, now let's work on the, the hair on the back. Okay. So, I'm going to, you know what, what I can do? Let me, let's see if I can reuse this actually, I'm feeling a little lazy. Let's bring this over here. I'm just going to reuse the color. Oh, hold on. Let's go ahead and Use that purple to highlight the outer edge. Okay, let's go ahead and add the shading for the back side of the tentacle. Gonna go ahead and hold on. This is gonna be the highlight. Oh. This is gonna be the highlight. Grab the color that's already there. And that highlight. And so same with this part. So this part, I'm just gonna reuse the color that I've already kind of establish. Let's go 
ahead and add that in. I'm gonna have to, what's it called? Uh, let me merge down real quick and make the tentacle a little bit sharper towards the end. Same with this, gonna add a little bit of dark color towards the tip of the tentacle. Clean up the shape. And uh, keep going. Rim light is still purple, so gonna keep using the purple. I'm starting to really like purple for shiny stuff. I'll probably use purple again if I paint sh super shiny, rendering super shiny uh, objects. Let's go ahead, keep outlining the rest of the tentacle with purple. While I'm at it, I'm just going to line it a bit. Now for the other part of the tentacle. So go ahead and reuse color. Maybe this tentacle could go this way. Go ahead and add that dark tip. For the back here, let me add a bit of green with a bit of yellow. Lock it down and back to using the purple. Add the purple for the outer edge of the tentacles. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some suction cup silhouette. Same deal. Fill it in and then pop some purple highlight. Let's go ahead and add a suction cup at the tip here. So we got the highlight. Add a bit of shadow here. Take the purple. Highlight the edge, the rim light. Go here, highlight it a bit more. Then, last but not least, add a bit of highlight. And of course, um, Let's add a bit of a gradient or kind of blend the color together a bit. I'm just going to do a gradient first or soft, soft shading and then add the highlights later. Let me add a tiny bit bit of lighting here on the inner part and on the outer part just to make it a little more interesting got one more tentacle to work on in the back I mean the back hair tentacle just this one Okay, so, you know what? I'm trying to see if I, if I can cheat a little. <laughs> Just gonna grab here. Oh, hold on, here. Bring it down. I'm gonna be using this as a base. So just 
instead of starting all over I'm just gonna use this lower the opacity maybe make it a little darker and uh, I'm going to go ahead manually manually add a bit of purple and then add a bit of green same for here manually add a bit of yellow and then blue actually no hold on that might be a bit That. Oh, hold on. Let's go ahead and kind of fill in the shape. We're gonna get one tentacle here. I'm gonna see if I can cheat once again or actually work a bit more efficiently. I'm gonna take that suction cup, bring it over because it's the closest one that's kind of that color just put it there let's tilt it a little it is a little dark so what I can do is go to color actually um, going to adjustment color balance so the the goal here is to make the outer edge kind of adjust a bit more green. So we change the whole color, no worries. Gonna go back here onto color to change the color of the suction cup only. And of course, it's kind of too dark now. So what I can do is brighten it up a little. previous color and then on the side here just going to add a bit of shadow first and then highlight and the highlight again Probably Let's go ahead and add the lighting a bit more, shade this up a bit more, and let's see if I can add a tiny bit of the outer edge show a little here so like the outer edge gonna add a bit of highlight there okay so this is that's that I want to uh, I want to tweak the colors a bit and uh, also I would like to add a bit of highlight actually copy paste highlight make it color I mean brighter go ahead and paint that adjust that paint and make that part of suction cup darker so that I can brighten that part of the suction cup alongside this part of the suction cup 
and uh, we will continue actually before that I'm gonna go into dissolve let's go with a yellow highlight I'm just going to add a bit of highlight right at where the shadow is and uh, let's go ahead and line the side here Again, use the yellow tone here. All right, guys, I'm back. So once again, I did a bit of rendering off camera. So this time, I focus on the chest area. So this is before, after. Just kind of rendered it out a little. Added some shadow and also clean this area up a bit. I'm gonna be also working on the tentacle a little more too actually because um, right now it's a little rough but yes um, for now I would like to kind of uh, work on the shorts work on the bottom area a bit so yeah let's get started for the shorts aiming for latex type of uh, texture so let's get started let's go ahead and use that purple just going to add the purple in purple and then let's see how it did that um, outside being yellow actually yellow and then purple and then a dark uh, blue got dark blue and then purple again <clears throat> isolate one area gonna use full-on black and going to emphasize the shading of the hips for this and then go ahead to the lapel for the shorts That's done. Okay, so for here there's a lot of turquoise, so we're gonna have a bit of that reflected. So the lapel is gonna be hit with the turquoise. Also under part of the shorts too. So I'm just going to go ahead and the seam and uh, keep adding the highlight on there Let's see here I'm going to use a bit of yellow the highlight at the center here and scribble a bit and then add actually just add a tiny bit of highlight there Let's 
same here. I'm just going to add um, some shorts, some clothing detail to the shorts, such as seams and uh, fabric thickness. So I've got to get some highlight on some of these areas. So it's uh, it looks a little more believable that they're clothing as long as uh, get a bit of thickness in there so that it doesn't look thin like paper and stuff. I'm gonna take a bit of this and add it here. Oh, just scribbling it. Let's add the purple. Continue to add it bit here and then a bit of it here just getting some of the highlights now and add a under seam lighting it's gonna reflect the stocking color which is turquoise really intense turquoise let's go ahead and try to add some shadow so it looks shinier Actually, not really sure what I'm doing. Just again testing it out. Go ahead and add a bit more highlight here. experimenting with the um, highlight here This is where the bit of highlight will be. Here, let's add a tiny bit of 
highlight nope Ooh. does not make sense if I add it there I'm just kind of looking back and forth if it doesn't feel right I remove it add a tiny bit of skin tone here dissolve and I want to try adding a bit of lighting here add a bit of thickness after The shorts is sort of getting there, but still not sure if I like it or not. I'm gonna work on the anatomy a bit. Let's go ahead and add a bit of highlight at the very bottom of the and also I'm going to actually darken this area just giving her a little bit of a um, contrast use the lasso tool to help me clean up this area add shadow especially when there's a skin to clothing contact definitely need shadow added let me go here just going to blend the shadow in now Most of the rendering is good, but still need a bit more. Um, needs more intensity in some areas. Let me erase this, bring that back. I kind of like the flow of this highlight, anyways. Go 
add and oh hold on maybe add a little highlight here just kind of want to see how it would look and stuff Just changing the contour of the shorts slash legs a bit, just kind of trying to see um, how it will look and stuff. Let me go ahead and clean the silhouette a bit. Like she's lifting up her leg a little. Mm. Just going to um, intensify. It, uh, sorry, intensify the stockings. Make it glow a bit. Actually, no way. Hold on. Make it. As for the tentacles, let's go with that and uh, let me adjust the intensity. shape of the leg mm. let's 
go ahead and move the knee a little over. Actually, no. Let's redo that. I mean delete, sorry. <laughs> okay, let me merge down this. Oh contrast, nothing happens. Time to work on the hand and then the zipper. Time to tackle the hand. Let me just figure out where it is. Okay, it's in that way. Let's get started. Let's zoom in a bit so that I can get a good view here and I'm just gonna start off by I'll probably clean up the glove so I'm gonna try to see if I can um, do a bit of shine go ahead and line that Hold on. Hmm. Just going to darken that part up. Since I already added the highlight line, so this side needs to be a little darker. I'll scribble some some lines. And just going into at the next highlight line and uh, I'm just gonna go in here and do the same outline same sorry same uh, shade here for highlight if you take a look at the reference you can kind of get an idea of how how the shine is kind of shadow on both sides, squeezing highlight within that parameter to create a glossy look, glossy material. So that's what we will be doing for the glove. Okay, now that it's slightly more rendered, I'm just 
gonna go ahead now for the fingers Just cleaning up the fingers, making them a little thinner So that... Hold on, needs more fix it and while I'm at it I have to go back in and shade the fingers a bit more and as well as cleaning up this finger wow that finger was really 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 wide now it's a bit too thin so I'm gonna go in to fix it but while I do that, I'm also going to I'm also going to work on Let me just bring finger in a bit. of the finger here. Bring that in. And uh, switch the light lighting a bit. Let's fold it this way. Use a bit of the Lasso, select the highlight. Oh, hold on. And I'm just going to darken. Continue with the highlight blending. There we go, now that the thumb is a bit tighter towards against the other fingers, it feels a bit more realistic. Time to work on this finger. I'm just gonna go ahead, blend that in. While I'm at it, I'm just going to refine the gloves to add some highlight to that side. There. So that's getting there. Now the only issue is finger might be a bit too long, so I'm just going to make the finger a little shorter and make the fingers a little shorter and the hand a little bigger. Size it up just a bit so that it's a bit more even. I think it's getting there. Let's keep on refining. Let me reset the view, flip it. Always recommend uh, flipping your image every once in a while, you know, just to 
make sure that you can get a kind of a fresh view of your piece every now and then. Let me go ahead and add a bit of highlight back to this. Let me go ahead. Actually, no, it needs to be a little bit. little bit longer. Just gonna add that as a shadow. After I add that, I'm gonna go into a yellow tone and uh, for the center, let's go with a dark blue. And uh, then gonna go in with a purple and add a bit of purple as well on the side <coughs> just to kind of keep keep up with the theme since I've been using quite a lot of purple thought you know add some more purple here and there but I guess um, maybe I might be abusing the purple a bit too much so let's see go back maybe I need to go back in with a darker color I'm just gonna go in with a darker color um, and uh, contour the highlight I'm going to use use a bright color for the highlight. Just going to highlight at the center usually of the glove. Well, uh, center of the finger that is covered by the glove. Sometimes when I'm super focused, I just can't grammar. <laughs> uh, so now it's all about blending and refining. Let's go ahead here. Let me just refine the shape of the finger. So we get the first knuckle, and then the actually this is the first knuckle, and then this is the second knuckle. So at the second knuckle, I'm just gonna make it a little brighter. And I'm gonna be cleaning up while I'm at it. Same with the thumb, needs a bit of a um, refining of the shape, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up the shape of the thumb. That should be the shape. And uh, go back in with a darker color for <coughs> the skin tone and gently transition that into the turquoise shade and I'm just gonna do a tiny bit of shadow around the nail and shine let me just, let me just also lighten the tip of the finger back to the glove Just going to highlight the very, very under, under um, the part of the glove that's facing downward, and really highlight it. Just cleaning it up a bit more. Actually, let me see how it would look if I actually contour 
the glove with the turquoise. I think this will give it a nice rim light look. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Looks definitely it looks like there's something like intense lighting come from below which is what I want ultimately because I was trying to go for that glowy stocking look that's good now I'm going to try to refine this part so going to dissolve I'm gonna go ahead and kind of blend some of the lighting in with the dissolve essentially just adding some specks and stuff I wonder where I okay actually let me go ahead and mm, actually I'm not super into it maybe I'll just have to highlight here maybe nope 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 Maybe here? Switch to a yellow. Maybe I'll add there. So I add another bit there. Mm, nope, doesn't work. I'll just keep one here and add a bit of it on the thumb area. That's it. Oh, hold on. Rotate reset view. I'm gonna go here and find the the top of the glove. Let's go ahead and bring up the purple tone, bring it all the way up. blue up let's go ahead and sure how sh I should approach this part. Maybe I need to darken this up. Once I darken this up, I'm going to readjust the highlight. And then add some highlight at the very top. There. Okay, now for the hand. There's nothing too much to work on except for the shape of the arm. Need to make it a little smoother. Essentially just fixing the shape slightly. Oh, hold on. Save to select. Now... Oh yeah, I forgot. I need to work on the belly button. I totally forgot about it. So, going to the torso layer 
make a new layer so that I can have it spend a little more time on it make making sure that it's nice and nice and sorted out just going to blend it in now add a tiny bit of highlight Just going to select that real quick so that I can add a tiny bit of shadow there. At the same time, I can go ahead and kind of work on the skin a bit. Add a bit more purple. Oh, hold on. Let's go ahead also refine the top a bit more. It needs to be darker. The I mean the the rim of the clothing just needs to be a little darker. tucked in nicely here okay and then just uh, refine it a bit more also just going to graze some of um, the abs area to kind of smooth it in a bit. Actually, I'm curious how it would look if I add a bit of purple. Probably not that light, just a little dark, darker purple. Wanna see how if it would help if I added that purple. Add a bit of it here. Actually should I let's see if it would help if I had the purple under like here. That's not too bad. That's not bad at all. And then have the what's it called? The highlight of underneath the belly button. Feels like there there should be a bit of texture here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a bit of texture. Same with here. and do the same here add a bit of shine on this hip actually mm, kind of want to do it like this and darken the side here 
so that it makes sense of the highlight here and then as for this part right here I want to try to see if I can use a cooler tone Let's go ahead and use dissolve back with a lighter color and then just going to blend that in let's go ahead I'm just going to line it Line it with a dark shadow color. Let's go ahead and select the mid tone here. Actually, yeah, mid tone here. I'm curious to see if it would work. Oh, damn, she's she is ripped. Her stomach is ripped. <laughs> That's how I painted her stomach. Hold on, maybe it might be a bit much. I'm just going to decrease the opacity so it's her stomach isn't as uh, ripped. Let's rotate it. Actually, should keep this at a hundred percent opacity, at least. And I'm going to also keep that area at a hundred percent opacity. Excuse me. Okay, I'm going to merge down now. Alright guys, so I actually took a break because it was getting really late while I was working on this. So this is the next day. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, go through what I changed. So came back, did a bit of rendering so that I could focus on the top and the tentacle rendering. You know, the shiny effects. I kind of want to record that part. Um, I'll show you guys what I did. So mainly on the stomach and the leg area so this well I actually cut this leg and kind of rotated a little bit um, to the bottom so before it was kind of like this so I rotated it paste it a little bit towards the bottom I don't know I just thought maybe the flow could be better this way so I was playing around with that other than that, kind of did a bit more rendering on the stomach area. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think I could probably rendering render it a bit more. Also, kind of fixed the shorts a little and added the thong, 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 because uh, I thought. You know, it could be like an interesting little detail. I kind of wanted to make it a bright turquoise, kind of like glow in the dark, to fit her glow in the dark stockings. So yeah, that's what I did, and uh, let's continue with the progress. Just going to kind of render out a few things here and there nothing in particular just yet and then we're gonna go straight to the top and stuff so for the glowing uh stocking pretty much just fill the stocking with solid color no shading and then use the airbrush to brush a little bit over the skin tone just to give it a nice glow also i think if i use overlay it can add some more intensity as well. But yeah, 
So that's pretty much what I did for the stocking area. I guess I guess I'm commit. No, actually, maybe I will keep this on a separate layer. Let's keep this on. Let's name it torso paint over it just in case I want to go back. So, um, what is in this layer? Oh, this is the glossy layer. Let's merge it down. So, onto the lapel layer. So, this layer, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I did kind of switch up how this lapel was kind of flipped. So, now it's showing straight like this and also we're gonna work on the the zipper as well so as for the lapel it is um, fairly complete just need to add some fabric thickness So I'm gonna try to do the shiny thing again. Uh, still kind kind of can't wrap my head around it too much. So from what we learned yesterday, it's kind of like scribbly-ish. Okay, let's <laughs> go with this. Hopefully it works. I'm gonna use the blue right here because it's already there. Might as well use it. Just gonna graze the inside add a little bit of yellow usually there's a bit of a warmer tone follow right right after the cooler tone I i'm trying to come up with like a set formula for this sort of rendering so this is what i observed and sometimes you know after i learn uh after i observe i learn something new i try to find a formula to it and then experiment and then hopefully after a while I I kind of get it and I can think a bit more logically so that's another way to uh, for me to pick up information and how to render stuff so this is the first pass as you can see you know if you look at the small preview it actually it doesn't look too bad but if you zoom in it's kind of like what is going on there but but after I do this, I'm going to have to keep layering it because if I don't layer it, then it probably won't make too much sense. So let me just do that, smooth it out. So I layered another tiny shadow over it and then it's time to add the purple. See the purple is has been a theme in this whole rendering process especially on shiny stuff well at least that's what i uh got from using reference so might as well try it out in all areas see how it looks maybe it look good maybe i'll you know get the shininess across so now i'm gonna use this beige here and just gonna line the outer edge of the fabric kind of making it look like um, a shiny layer sort of like how I did the tentacles where I lined it with the beige color so I'm just borrowing that uh, concept onto the fabric as well and uh, so far it's looking pretty shiny I'm pretty happy about it so I'm just going to continue uh, Okay, but at the same time, I cannot, uh, oh, I guess I kind of painted over the face. That layer is kind of on top of the face, okay? So, so this looks pretty good now. I'm kind of curious. I'm going to make a new layer. What if I do this? I'm going to do this. Create a highlight like this and then another highlight on top oh god okay just testing out let's uh hold on and let's do some random shapes actually 
I don't know. I kind of want to follow the flow of the... Uh, follow the flow of how the fabric is folding. Um, let's go ahead and... Oh god, <laughs> it looks like abstract shapes inside the the clothing. Uh, let me lower the opacity <laughs> and warp it a bit, maybe. Looks like a crater right here. Um, okay, that that might work. This kind of works. And uh, I'm going to... Let's line the top. There. Okay, I think that should do it. So yeah, not bad. It's looking pretty shiny. I like that. I think I'm kind of getting it. Alright guys, time to work on that zipper. Okay. So I got the base already. I just need to kind of render it out a little. And uh, add some more little details. So let's lock in the layer. I'm going to go into multiply to add some uh, color variety. So let's start off with adding a bit of green. And then let's go ahead and add a bit of purple. And then after I do that, I'm going to go ahead, use a super bright color on a small brush. I'm just gonna line the corners and I'm just going to see how this goes. So I'm gonna try to add a bit of shine on the side here. Okay, that's not too bad. Although this is not not the result I want. Let's try that first. Then going in to one of the design, adding a bit of a volume. I'm just going to add it like that. I'm going to also select that side. And then back to here. I might need to fix this. Let's remove a bit of that. And just going to um, render out a bit of shadow. So basically, kind of like short brush strokes in this sort of pattern. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with down here. Maybe I'll just keep it like that. Let me just also do a bit more shadow on the other side. This needs a bit of Volume 2. Just gonna soften that up. There. Deselect. Hold on. This is supposed to be a bit lower. Let me just lasso that for a bit. Just creating a bit more definition. I think I, I tried it with the uh, highlight 
on this area um to didn't really like it so now i put it in shadow so hopefully it'll work out continue with the bright color just gonna line line that as well just testing it out I wonder how it would look if I add it actually if I add it shine here there there clean this up a bit unlock the layer so that I can paint actually have to make this a little lower like here so that I can paint a little tag that is connecting the clothing with the uh, uh, the zipper there move it oh hold on whoops move it a little bit up like here now that that's done I'm gonna go ahead and uh, work on those little uh teeth for the zipper so they're pretty big so i'm just going to manually paint them so just gonna paint them sort of sectioned out like this okay let's see I wonder if I should have a bit of it up here too, not sure. Well, uh, um, I guess I'm having the zipper go up too. Let's see how that looks. Ah, I don't know how this will work actually, it makes no sense <laughs> that the teeth would go all the way up even after like uh, the change of direction for the fabric I'm not too sure, well I mean aesthetically I think it looks better this way, oh hold on the teeth will gradually disappear because of the changing angle and stuff. Okay, continue. Oh, wait, hold on. Mm. 
-hmm. Keep going. Okay, I think that should be it. <laughs> That's a lot of teeth. Zipper teeth, that is. Not, not any other kind. Also, probably need some down here too. Just to bring some of that design element down to her shorts. Alright, so time to shade it, shade them. I'm gonna go ahead and start kind of adding some shadow to the areas where I think that uh, the shadow should be. So this for this, it's under. And for this, it's probably like that. Here, I'm gonna be a bit more careful. So it's definitely this way. Now that I have that done, I'm going to go pick a brighter color to highlight each, uh, what to call it, teeth. This one's going to be up in front. And for these, it's on top. Hopefully it makes sense. I'm just try trying to think logically. This one should be here. I need to render out um, the side a bit more. Right now it's just a blob with highlight. Let's go ahead and make this part a little shinier, a little brighter. Don't let me see how that looks. Oh, might be a bit too big. Just gonna make the size a bit smaller. Going back to the torso layer so that I can render this one out. Let's go ahead and fill it with a dark color and then scribble the highlight shape. I'm gonna use the 
bit of green for this. Alongside with a bit of yellow. And then I'm gonna go over it with some purple. Then go back here, add a bit of shadow, a bit more shadow, and I'm gonna go with a lighter color and kind of align the outer edge of the lapel. Probably also gonna have to do that to the rest of the clothing. Just adding a uh, extra bit of thickness. Let me see how it will look if I kind of add some highlights like this. <laughs> it looks like teeth. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of done, I think. Mm. Let me go ahead and uh, add some additional details around the teeth. Mostly just kind of making the fabric a little thicker with some more highlight slash shadow. adding some highlight now at the edge of the fabric where the zipper teeth are also going to add some highlights to some of these areas as one-offs Okay, now down here, let's go ahead and add the shadow for the teeth. So the lighting's coming from below, so I'll be keeping that in mind when I paint the shadow for that. So the shadow's coming from below. Let's get some shadow on some of these area as for the highlights coming from below so giving some of the teeth thumb intense highlight from below then gonna go in add a bit of rim to the fabric That should do it. Hopefully. Okay. Just need one more thing. Need a bit of shadow from the zipper on top of the body. So. Let's see. Pro 
probably around here. Just gonna lower the opacity a bit and play around with that. Lower opacity, merge down, and there we have it. We have a bit more detail for that, so now it's time to move on to the tentacles. Move that, just cleaning it up a bit. So now, oh, hold on. Okay. Delete. I need to move the bra lighting over a bit. Like that. Gonna clean, clean that area up. Let's fill this in too. Okay, so that's that. First thing th first. Let's go ahead and. Add a little dark shade to the tip of the tentacle. And kind of uh, clean that up to I'm going to go ahead and add some soft lighting here just to take away from the harshness of the shadow tone. Okay, now new layer. Bring some of the warmer tone onto the turquoise part or the green part of the uh, of the uh, tentacle. And gonna add some of that also onto the highlight area. And at the same time, just gonna try to keep it to a minimum. Add some highlight here. Now for this part. Go for a bit of a shadow. Gonna go ahead and add some highlights at the very edge there. Let's go for a bit of a purple tone. Just gonna fill in that area with purple and with yellow. Just to try it out. And then another one. I want this time to be bright. Go ahead and align that. So this part is gonna be underneath. Oh wait, no, that that probably won't work. Gonna fill this in with turquoise. Okay, let's see. Need 
need some more volume on this side. Go ahead and add a tiny bit of highlight here. Add a bit of shine. Just trying to make it wet looking. see what else I can do. Mm. Gonna add a tiny bit of texture. Let me march down, we'll create another layer. Tiny bit of texture, which is like little specks of color inside some of the tentacles. Just scribbling some tiny stuff and at the same time we're going to erase some of them just to make it more random let's add some purple-ish specks as well add it here too scribble scribble just gonna do some more s scribbling. Excuse me. Ah, allergies kicking in again. My bad. Okay. Actually, I don't think I should uh, have the undertone show too much here. Or should I? Just doesn't look that great to me. Mm, let's add some here actually. Maybe I can do it like this. Oh, I think this makes a bit more sense actually. If I have the undertone show it just a little bit up here. Okay. After I'm done with that, just wanna add some more shine towards the bottom area use a bit of blue here just to kind of show Another highlight color. Right here. And then another one. be a bit too bright maybe just maybe just there and then just blend it in okay I think it's getting shinier. Now I just have to kind of 
erase just a tiny bit of what I did. Um, and at the same time, hold on, not like that. Just kind of add um, some more highlights here and there. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, pretty much just experimenting to see what is the what gives the best shine result. Let me make this part darker so that I can make this part brighter and we're gonna use this color Actually, no, it looks bad. Let's remove that. Um, let's go ahead and add a tiny bit of blue in here. Let's see if I can add a bit of that dark color. I don't know if it will work. Just scribble a bit of it away. Scribble a bit of it away, followed by highlight. Let me just blend this in and then we'll do the highlight. Let's go ahead and use the blue color. Blue and purple. Let's try that. It's not working, I'm just gonna kind of uh, warp it a little, you know, hoping that <laughs> if it's warped enough, it might end up looking like it makes sense. I think this makes a bit more sense. Okay. Alright, guys, so we're pretty much nearing the end of this tutorial. I went ahead and added some more detail to the rest of the tentacles um, using the same exact, well, s very similar principles in my head that I did with the other tentacles. Um, but for the finishing touch, I was thinking it would be really cool to add some splashes of, splashes of paint. And in turquoise color, you know, just to give it a bit of, um, uh, make it a little more dynamic. So, uh, let's get to it. I'm not uh, super used to painting, um, like, splashes of liquids. I'm very not sure how to do it, so I'm just going to reference, uh, some splashes from 
in game because I'm not super sure how to do it. So I'm noticing they have this sort of um, flow, like kind of random with splotches of area that ends in a little round ball. So I'm just gonna try to go with this type of flow. So let's hope that it works. So I'm just gonna select those shapes that uh, that I think kind of works and hopefully it is. So this is the first pass so I'm gonna fill it in now with the turquoise color. Actually let's go. Let's go for this color. Uh, hold on. Okay. I think it needs some work. Definitely needs some work. Some of it need to be a little bit um, I, I'm gonna play around with some of the shapes because feels feels like hmm. feels like it needs super into the Okay, it doesn't look mm, don't really like it too much. We'll have to check. Have to kind of think about that. Let me think about it. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, found another reference. Just gonna take the splashes. Okay. Let's do the shape first. So I'm gonna get a little shape there. other smaller shapes like this and keeping the end sort of round. Let me fill this in. Um, now for this side. Let's go ahead and cut that a bit so that it's more dynamic. Kind of I can kind of tell by the empty spacing. Sometimes uh, you need more negative spacing in certain areas. Okay. Let me remove that. Let's have a bit more splashes here. Okay, that should be it. So now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and add some uh, shadow. So let's go ahead and add the first layer. Pick, oh, hold on. Pick a shadow color. Okay, so actually maybe I should be using the airbrush. You know what, I'll be using the airbrush. So the airbrush, airbrushing in some shadow for the paint. Um, I am, I can't really explain why I'm shading certain areas, just trying to figure out some what a um, way to paint so that there's volume. I guess I'm 
kind of contouring some of these blotches, these round blotches at the end here. Let's go ahead and keep going at the basic layer of paint. There's a bit here too, and here, here. I'm not sure about this. I feel like Maybe it needs. Hold on. Maybe it needs like a bit of negative spacing here. Hold on. Trying to figure out. Uh, nope. That wouldn't fit the flow too well. Let's select this whole thing and kind of warp it a bit. Sometimes I can. Get impression or warp it in a way that it fits the composition a bit better. Let's go ahead and add a bit of negative spacing there. Then add back in the rest of the silhouette. so sure about this. Maybe I'll do it like that. Um, let's add some droplets here. Keeping it fairly round, you know? droplets and might also need to kind of kind of move them around a bit because uh, it's kind of hard to for me at least because I'm not used to painting liquids kind of to get it to a good state so Adding some casual highlight, mostly towards the end here. Let me go ahead and add some more tiny separations for uh, the liquid. Here, add another blob at the end. Now, this is definitely not, definitely not, uh, not my thing because already I can tell, um, definitely not achieving the result that I want. shadow. I keep saying shaded area underneath the shadow. Uh, I don't even know if it makes sense or not. Let's go ahead and add some shadow to this part. zoom in a bit more add some more shadow around and then add 
the highlight. this into um, some more tiny uh, separation droplets get one here just trying to get uh, some more organic looking droplets. Okay, maybe we can have uh, one here, maybe. Connect it with the dot at the end. Make it a little skinnier there. Separating from the main one. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying, guys. Uh, sometimes, um, especially for these type of stuff, I'm pr pretty much my brain is on overdrive, kind of trying to okay, where can I place this droplet here and stuff like that. But at the same time, these are the instances where drawing becomes fun and challenging for me because I'm kind of like okay how how can I make this look more natural just added some more droplets hopefully let's go ahead and add some shadow in them like connecting the dot pretty much okay now it's just looking like a Y I need to remove this maybe have it here they look like Y's I can't get it out of my hand let me remove them let's go ahead continue to do little dots Another little dot here. I'm going to go ahead and do a negative spacing here. And another one here. Actually, maybe not. Don't want it to be seen as too repetitive. looking pretty liquidy now time to render this side now so try to pretty much um, do what I did for the other side on this and this end I don't know how detailed I'm gonna take it um, so far you know only got tiny section of it doesn't seem to be too bad Go ahead and highlight this area here. Mm -hmm. 
followed by shadow on all sides. And again here, let's go ahead and shade this part too. Now time for time for some tiny let's go ahead and do some dots. I decided to do this way. <laughs> it might be a little easier. Oh, hold on. Maybe like that. Something in this manner. Let's make one here, make one here and then here here maybe connect the dots now but I uh, have to keep in mind not to do that too much I have to have some variety every now and then let's go ahead and do one like this time to put in the highlight at the tip of these areas Ooh, okay yeah it's getting there let's put one here and then one here one here it's kind of like a dot game I think I think this might be a little easier to <laughs> explain. Just having those random little splatters. Let's go ahead and make one here. And then one here, one here, one here. And connect them, kind of. We'll see how I'm gonna connect them. Oh, hold on. Let me rotate this. Make it look like this. And then add the shadow on the inside of these splatters. And add the highlight towards the bottom. Dot some more. There. Okay, let me clean the bottom up a bit. and do another tip here like that and then add the shadow um oh wait I have one more here Do another separation here, taper it, oh no hold on, uh, let's do it like this or put it here, I'm trying to figure out a place to put it. Go ahead and taper this. There. Let's go ahead and add some more detail to the bottom. Splashy. Splash. Have a bit more tape. 
over here. Oh wait, hold on. And uh, maybe... not too sure where I'm gonna put this maybe here on the side there and work on these areas nothing too much to work on just add some basic shading and stuff maybe you can have a little droplet here there. Okay, I think that should do it. Now back to this side. Since there's more areas to cover on this side, I'm gonna have to um, spend a bit more time on it. Let's go ahead and add the highlight. And I'm uh, going to see how about some negative spacing here and uh, remove that bit. Let's go ahead and separate that into a little droplet. ahead and see if I can add another droplet here oh no actually I don't like it because these droplets are kind of in the same spot let's go ahead and do this droplet here another droplet here and one there and then some random ones like that. Let's go ahead and add the shadow now. Okay, after. Oh, wait, let me remove this. And redo it. After that, I'm going to go ahead add some highlight. There. That should do it. Okay, I think we're good on that. So here we have a bit of a liquid rendering. Just to fill in the composition, I think it makes the background look a lot more interesting now. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this voiceover. I tried to explain to you guys my process. I was trying to also figure it, figure it out at the same time. So hopefully we learn something together. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day and take care and stay safe. Bye guys.